So as Jesus is speaking with his disciples, he makes mention of something that I think all of us believers, all of us that <clears throat> all of us that serve Christ, I think it's something that we all need to be mindful of as we as we go forward and as we as we realize that the word of God is needed it's needed it, we are commanded to, to preach we're commanded to preach and go and tell the people about the good news of Jesus Christ but one of the things that you'll discover, you know, when you get saved, you get, you get baptized in Jesus. And for some people, and it happens at different stages than others, but you reach a point where, where the Bible talks about it's like a fire shut up in your bones. And you reach a point where you want to proclaim the, the love of, of God. You want to proclaim the truth and the forgiveness of Jesus. You become grateful of your salvation. You realize, like, I'm saved. I've been rescued from my sin and my rebellion and my wicked and ungodly condition. And as you submit to Jesus every day, you realize how you're overcoming things, how you're being delivered from things, how you're, you're growing in your, your ability to obey, you're growing in, in, in your knowledge of God, and your ability to apply what you're reading. And you begin to fall in love with that. And just like anyone that falls in love with something, you want to share that. You want to share that with those that you love. Your family, your, your, your co-workers, the people that you consistently interact with. It's hard not to eventually get to Jesus and talk about Jesus. But you start realizing as you share this message of love and forgiveness and truth. <clears throat> you start to realize that most people don't receive what you say. And what I mean by receive, they will receive where they will hear it. But then you notice that they can't go forward with what you gave them to the degree that they want what you want to where they make the decisions that you make to become born again. And then let the Spirit of God, as they submit to the process of salvation, letting the Spirit of God truly take control of their lives and of their, of their person, you realize that that's not something that they want. Now, some may go as far as getting baptized, but then you realize that as they go forward, as as life continues to go on and they have to continue because Jesus continues to want, he wants more of us as you, as you commit yourself to Jesus. He's not, he's not satisfied with just you giving yourself to baptism. He likes the fact that you went through that because that represented the fact that you have been, you have been made acceptable for him to start bringing change in your life but most people don't like that change because change is uncomfortable change. Also, and then there's change that requires effort on your part. You have to decide in your mind that you want to change, but you'll discover that people don't want to make those changes and then they'll drop out. They won't continue in this fight of faith with you. And the reason why, well, one of the reasons why 
I believe, is as Jesus in Luke chapter 8 is talking to his disciples. Um, and he's he's talking to these he's talking to these people, and he speaks this parable of us the sower, and he talks about how this it was a sower that sows his seed. Luke chapter eight verse five. It says a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell up on a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he said these things, he cried, he that hath ears, let him hear so Jesus is trying to release some wisdom and some understanding as he's ministering this parable. And in the scripture that I'm, I'm going to stop at, um, in Luke chapter 8, verse 9, and his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. So, it's not a, it's not so much a matter of um, our ability to intellectually know the scriptures, because there are people who have a very intellectual, theosophical, theological theological approach to the scriptures and they can read the scriptures very good and break and break them down they can tell you what they mean they love the bible if you've had conversations with people you will realize that a lot of people love the bible they love to read the word of god they love the wisdom of god but when you start talking about the gospel of jesus christ and you start talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is when you see the disconnect. This is when you see the interest start to dissipate. And the reason why is because the grace that needs to be active in the life of a person may not be active to the degree that what's being said is actually registered. It's actually, their heart is actually open to receive what's being said. So as the, as the kingdom of God is being preached to them, the message of repentance and being born again, and, the, and, and being baptized in the Holy Ghost and in the fire of God, as, as you start to minister these things, because it's, for some people, it's, it's like something that they can't receive because the righteousness of God is something that they reject. The Word of God even says in Proverbs that righteousness exalts a nation, the nation. So most people love the Bible. They love the story of Adam and Eve. You know, they'll, they'll tell you about how they know that. They'll tell you about Noah's arcs. See, a lot of these stories have become so common that they've lost their, their, their power. They've lost. Now, to the sons of God, we read these stories, and we continue to get fresh wisdom, fresh revelation, because the Spirit of God is inspired and the Spirit of God is moving in our lives to the degree that the Word of God is alive for us. So when we revisit these, these stories, we're falling more in love with Jesus. And we're, we're, we're coming into deeper understanding of how God works with people. 
and how God wants to work in our lives. That's why we refer to these people because these are, the word of God is a, is a, it's a account. It's, it's, it's con, a, accounts of the lives of people who the spirit of God impacted, changed, worked through. And we are meant to use these people as examples. But most people look at this, they look at the story of Jesus and they look at the story of the, the, son, the sons of God that we read, our brothers and our sisters in the faith in the, in the, in the Bible. They look at these as just simply stories. Like this is a study book. This is something, this is just one of many books that they have in their collection that they read. You know, and that they, they occasionally just want to come to these stories and they walk away feeling good. It's like Nicodemus. They just want to come and get some some wisdom. They just want to come and get some, some mental stimulation and then they want to go on with their lives. Understand that people do, it's not that people are not reading the Bible because people will read the Bible and people do know things about the Bible. But because... The spirit of God is not teaching them because the spirit of God is not because the spirit of God is not at work in them. And because the substance of faith is not drawing them to read the word because the substance of faith is not bringing them to the feet of Jesus, then they are lacking the connection. They are lacking the connection that they need to really understand and really unlock the truths of Jesus that is available to them. So it's a mystery. The kingdom of God to them is a mystery and it's something that they're not able to grab onto and to really benefit from. And we don't wanna be in this place. So when we fear God, that's the beginning. Fearing God is when we begin, that when knowledge unlocks for us. Fearing God, that's acknowledging that God is sovereign. God is just. God is in control. God is all-knowing. And submitting to that truth opens us up to the things of God. It opens us up to the, the, the miraculous. That's what's lacking. Because people read the Bible as just a study book or just a book to, you know, refer to from time to time. It's not bringing them, it's not opening them up to the miraculous. Salvation itself is miraculous. But, but understand for some people, it was just a ritual. It was just merely them getting into the water and getting wet for a second. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of religious movements that, you realize there's an attack on the identity of Jesus. There's an attack on Jesus Christ being God. There's an attack on that. When we have so many scriptures that point to the fact that Jesus is God. Jesus is God. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So although there are three distinctive, three distinctive parts, three distinctive things, they are all one. But you realize that people deny Jesus as Lord. So because they deny Jesus as Lord, there's understanding that is kept from them. So, it's unde so they can't learn the mysteries of God. They're not going to be able to hear. They're not going to be able to see. And they're not going to be, they're not going to be able to see what God is really doing through what he said. What God is really doing by his spirit. They're not really going to be able to understand what God needs them to understand as we get closer to the return of Jesus Christ. Because their hearts are not open to receive. And if your heart's not open to receive, you're not going to be able to understand So my prayer is that 
as you have submitted yourself and you position yourself to hear this word, I pray that you have received that the Lord by grace will give you ears to hear. And I pray that by faith, you press into the kingdom of God and let God reveal himself to you in, in a miraculous way, in a way that you really need to, so that you can truly see him. Because the Bible says, eyes have not seen, nor ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man, the things that God has for those that love him. So my, my prayer today and my desire is that the love of God will overwhelm you and you will let it do that so that you can be transformed and so that you can go forward go forward in a true relationship with Jesus and so that you can spend eternity with him because that is his desire. He wants you to focus on eternity. When Jesus came into the world, that was eternity coming into the world for man. And everybody that believes on him will, will have everlasting life.